All right, so this one's a little bit different. Normally there's a video where I'm like, hey, I got this thing and we're gonna make it better, right? Well, if you remember a couple videos ago, I built a system for my friend Noah that had a Pioneer SX434 as the main receiver in, the, in that setup for his living room. And wouldn't you know, there's a Pioneer SX434 very much dissected sitting right here on my bench. And yes, this is the same one. A couple months after I did that receiver for him, which I think I gave it to him in early July of 2023. And then sometime in August, like late August, 2023, he was like, hey, my record player is really quiet. He got a record player and he got a couple of record players. Actually, he found a really good deal on a bunch of stereo stuff. He didn't have the ground wire plugged in. So I was like, at first, oh, that's gotta be why. Plugs the ground wire in, it's way better. But then a couple weeks go by and he's like, hey, it's still, it's just like really quiet and it's like intermittent. It feels like it's getting worse. And so what it turned out to be, there are four transistors that are known to go bad in the phono stage and I hadn't replaced them. And I don't really know why I didn't replace them, but I was like, oh, I'll just, I'm assuming that's what it is. But I brought a bunch of stuff down, you know, different parts and whatever, just to his house, just to make sure that I could get it fixed. And, uh, and so I put those new parts in and I actually got it on video of why it's back on my bench. So rather than me explain it, you can just watch this and you see, you hear that I'm listening to music. It's all great, all dandy, everything's going fine. But you'll also notice that just like the way it was sitting on my bench, uh, there's no heat sink on those output transistors because I took it off to lift the board. And in my head, I was like, hey, it's fine if I run this for maybe 30 seconds without a heat sink. But then I ran it for about a minute and a half without a heat sink and this happened. So that brings us back to why this is on the bench. The left channel started making that really loud noise. And I basically just assumed at that and started smoking the, I believe it's the volume, one side of the volume control and one side of the balance control, I think. It was the right right channel of both of those. I started smoking. I knew I should only play it for like 20 seconds tops. And if it works, then it's great. I need to put the heat sink back on, whatever. But then it's one of those things where that you listen to that, you hear the little voice and then you ignore the little voice and I ignored the little voice. So then this happened. But I basically, I had forgotten my dim bulb tester at home, so I couldn't do any further troubleshooting on it. So I just packed it up and unfortunately brought it all the way back and now it's at my house and I'm gonna have to take it back to his house at some point, which is totally fine because he lives far away and I don't get to see him that often. So I'll just, it's another reason to get to go over there and see him. I love that. Basically the troubleshooting I did so far, I just assumed, okay, it's gotta be output transistors and it was only the right channel. So the left channel was fine. So I pulled the, uh, two output transistors on the right side and both of them have a short in them. And then one of the resistors that actually started smoking, I brought it home and I put it on my dim bulb tester after that to see if I could have it on to diagnose the problem a little bit. And I turned it on instead of the volume control and such burning up, a resistor started smoking. I took that out. That one actually still measures fine at 150 ohm resistance. I wasn't sure if I wanted to make this video, first of all, because it's just a lot of me talking, sitting here, telling a story, explaining a thing, but also because it's a mistake and you know I want to come across as somebody that's knowledgeable and, ex and and good at what I do and that sort of stuff at least this is only a you know $250 receiver not a thousand dollar receiver like I will never do that again in my life I will never run transistors they're supposed to have a heat sink without a heat sink this is the first receiver that I worked on like coming really worked on coming back to working on stereos after taking 10 years off basically and and this is the one that I messed up and so it's just I don't know, it's, that's kind of funny to me. It's like, it's the first one, it doesn't matter. I've fixed like six receivers since this and have no issues with any of them. But anyways, let's get into it. If you can see this resistor right here, right, is what started smoking, right? This is R82. So then I basically just followed the trace on the board back and you can see that that resistor goes just down this trace and it goes straight from the base of this transistor. That's what B stands for here. And so then I'm like, okay, it even looks a little dark right there on that trace. Like maybe it got a little burn. So I pulled this transistor first and that is our nine, eight, uh, KSA 940 transistor here. And I measured on my transistor tester and the these two leads are shorted on each other. They're not supposed to be shorted and they are. So then I was like, okay, well that transistor is bad. So let me check the emitter resistors, which are this resistor and this resistor here. And so they both measure right at half ohm. So no problems there. Well, what's next, right? So if we go follow the traces kind of around, you can see there's this diode here. So I pulled the diode, diode tests fine. So then I go to the next transistor down the line and this transistor i pulled it it's also shorted this trace from the base of this transistor comes to our burned resistor which then goes to up here which goes to r62 which is this resistor that's actually missing right now i pulled it out it's this bad boy right here this one's supposed to be 15k and it's at 75k so that one's way out of spec so we got to replace that one and then you can see that the only other transistor on this trace or the only other resistor like immediately after here is this resistor which is also shared to the base 
of the other transistor that was bad. So this one tests at 151.6 ohms. I'm just following traces and looking around, which is really all you can do because we can't power this on. So I can't, all I can do is pull components and test them. All right, so I made this little diagram on my computer. This is the section of the schematic we're working with. This is our burned resistor right here. This is our resistor that's at 75K. Hold up. Before we go any further, let's take a quick break to talk about the accuracy of these old service manuals. I read on the schematic when looking at the service manual that it says it's a 15K resistor and we tested it and it measures at 75K. And I happened to notice that I double, I cross-checked the value of the resistor to the parts list below the in the service manual, below the schematic. And it said this was a 75K resistor. On our little schematic here, I was like, okay, so we have a burned one and then we have R62, 15K, and then I have it marked as 75K. But if you look at the other channel, the same resistor on the other channel, it says, 75k and then if you scroll down and you look for r62 you can see r61 and r62 are both supposed to be 75k also here's my cat chinook what a good little man he wants out goodbye the other thing that i am not the best at is reading the rings of color on a resistor to determine what it is and this one has a purple ring which stands for a seven and then it has a green ring which stands for a five and then the orange ring is a multiplier and in this case it's a one kilo ohm multiplier so it'd be 70 the value is 75 multiplied by one kilo ohm so it's 75 kilo ohms and then the gold band that's fourth which i know you probably can't see this the gold band that is the fourth ring on this little resistor on the right side yeah, it just signifies that it is a 5% accurate, you know, precision resistor. Reading that is what I should have done very first, just so that I could, you know, that's what you should always do. You should always put out, put in what you're taking out. And so if there was a 75 kilo ohm resistor and then you should just put another 75 in there. Anyways, let's get back to the regularly scheduled troubleshooting program. This is the resistor after it, which I also measured. It's supposed to be at 1K and it was just under 1K. So that one's perfect. And so there is a capacitor right here that's, a small 47 microfarad 25 volt. So that might have been adversely affected. So we've got that capacitor hooked up to our leads here and capacitors are supposed to have resistance on them. There's no resistance at all. And if we flip our leads around on it, it just shows zero. So this capacitor is actually bad. So it's likely that this is all that's wrong, but we are gonna go ahead and check just a couple other things. This is a replacement 47 microfarad capacitor. I just wanted to show you what it looks like when you have a good capacitor. So our multimeter, it, when I first connected this capacitor, the multimeter was showing at 2.2 ohms. And now you can see it's just steadily climbing. That's that's as the capacitor is filling up. There's more and more resistance. And so now we've just hit four ohms. This is what a healthy capacitor looks like. So we're gonna pop this in, then make a parts list and order the parts that we need because I've followed the traces all around the board until I'm not seeing I'm I, I'm not seeing anything that's out of spec beyond what we've looked at. And this is my you know parts bin over here. These are some future projects. This is a little you know fun snippet for you all. So we have a CR450 Yamaha, CR3020 Big Boy Yamaha that I'm gonna get to work on. We got a Sansui 9090 and then a Pioneer SX636. And then over in this corner, I have a Kenwood Model 11.3. And I'm gonna be working on all these in future videos. So, you know, and then we also have a, a Marantz 4270 sitting down there. We have a Yamaha Sierra 800. All right, so it's a day later and I am a day wiser. And we're still working on this Pioneer 434. And I went through and did some other troubleshooting because I realized I slept on it and I was like, oh wow. Uh, you know, these, the volume control and stuff was smoking. So I should probably check and see if those even work anymore. So each of these potentiometers has two channels, right? Because we're dealing with a stereo amplifier. One shaft that controls two variable resistors. We have three pens, three legs for each side of each potentiometer. And basically, depending on the way, you only need to measure two of them, but you don't measure the two on the sides. You measure the middle to either one of the sides. Right now, my mul the multimeter is reading 1.2 resistance, which basically just means that the volume should be, the volume was all the way up. 85, 86 kilo ohms, 87 kilo ohms. Now, if I start lowering the volume, you can see it went up before it went down there. Could just be an old pop and now we're going down and see how it blanked out there for a second and it's zero it goes zero l even though it, it seems like maybe that's a dead spot but all it is is just changing decimal points you can see the numbers are just as it moves and it'll do the exact same thing when we drop down below 10. but see how it goes up there 
like we were going down and it was at 16 and then you go down more and it jumps up to 30. So it'll be, th these, these might be inconsistent and I might need to replace the pods. It's kind of hard to say without hearing them. All right, I'm back and I have the new parts. I have my uh, two output transistors as well as our little carbon film 150 ohm resistor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install the two transistors and this resistor here real quick, and then we'll go from there. Real quick though, I did wanna pause. I got this new resistor bender that I'm really excited about. You can just stick the resistor into the center here and then you can just bend the leads down over the sides and it gets you perfect spacing. Uh, you can just stick whatever the old you know, resistor is in there, see exactly what the spacing needs to be, bend the leads over, and then that way you're not stressing the edges of the, the actual resistor. I got this one from Mauser for like four bucks. So I actually noticed something when I was looking at the replacements I got for this, and I'm thankful that this parts order I just made was so big because I don't know, and this is just another mistake that I made, I don't know how I found these specific replacements as the ideal replacement for these transistors, but uh, they're not the correct replacements, the ones that are in here, which would make sense why I remember when I delivered this that it was, it distorted at like the loudest volume and it just, it didn't sound as good. And so it, it turns out these don't have as high of a power handling and so they're not actually a great replacement transistor. Thankfully, I ordered a bunch of extras of the correct replacement transistors for a different receiver and I ordered multiples of them. So I had a full set. So I'm gonna desolder these two and then throw in the new four and see how, put it back together and, and see if it works. You basically have to screw the transistors into the heat sink because you need them to stick out the right amount out of the board. Then you screw the heat sink into the board and then you bend the transistor leads over and you solder them in place so that you get all of them perfectly seated. A bit of pushing and a bit of maneuvering and just like that. You've now got the board down enough we just have to get these potentiometers in through the holes over here. I would not recommend this receiver as a first restoration. I read somebody saying that online and I did not take them seriously. I was like, oh, I can do it, that's no problem. And then obviously I messed up a few things when I did it, so. So now I'm gonna clean up all these solder joints. And then we'll go ahead and bend all of these leads down for each transistor. Now it's time to solder in the output transistors. I think we might just leave that power board hanging up for now and plug it into the dim bulb and just see, see what happens because previously, I mean, I couldn't get it to power up at all without starting to smoke, so. All right, so I'm gonna drop down to one 40 watt bulb. Here goes nothing. Oh. I don't see any smoke. That's a good sign. Let's try tipping it up. No smoke. So now we'll go ahead and measure some voltages on the speaker terminals. They're both measuring right at 46 millivolts, which is a bit high. All right, so I'm setting the power board back down in here before we connect speakers, because we don't need to adjust the bias, basically if it's positive or if it's negative, you just cut a certain jumper and it's not outrageously high. Always nice to wrap up a project. And I feel really bad that I made this, put this together for a friend and then it broke and I did a bad job, but that's why I did it for a friend, not for a client, because I'm learning. You know, you're always gonna make mistakes in business and stuff, but it's how you handle those mistakes that counts. Already. Everything's set up, tightened up, got aux input on. No buzzing out of the speakers. Oh, it sounds great. Balance controls work. That's awesome. I was worried that these wouldn't be working. Such a relief, dude. I, I feel, I felt so bad that this happened to my friend's receiver and that I worked on and I just felt like such an idiot with this mistake, just like running the outputs for too long without a heat sink, did them in, but it also turns out that they were the wrong outputs to begin with. So I'm gonna put this in the living room for a little bit and just run it, make sure that it works fine for a while. Uh, and as long as it does, it'll go back to my friend. So thank you for watching me fix my mistakes and uh, <laughs> 
please be nice to me in the comments, but tell me if there's anything that I continue to do wrong in this restoration. I think that it would be really funny if right now as I'm saying this, it just like kind of started smoking, uh, but it would also be really annoying. So I'm glad that it's it's not, not yet. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, please subscribe and follow for more.